All right, this is a really neat idea and it brings in a lot of things that you already know about vectors. So I'm just going to draw up a force diagram really quickly. There's our force diagram. Now it might be an object hanging from a string, the weight's pulling it down, uh, but it's in equilibrium and that's a really important idea. If it's in equilibrium, then that means that the resultant of the three forces is equal to zero. Okay, now graphically, what does it look like if three vectors are added together and it's equal to zero? Well, you get this great thing here. So I'm gonna take vector C and just move it over here for a second. That's vector C. Take vector B and move it over to here. Take vector A and move it to here. And you get this great thing, the triangle of forces. Now, why should it be a triangle? Well, remember, if you're adding vectors graphically, you go tip to tail, tip to tail, and this would be the result. If I add three vectors, I can just keep adding new vectors onto the end of them. Now, if three vectors are in equilibrium, if you add them together and they are equal to zero, then that must mean that the vector, the resultant vector, has zero. So that means it needs to go back to where it started from. Okay, we can use this and our sine rule and our cosine rule to solve questions where things are in equilibrium. So here's our example. You might want to pause it and read it before I keep talking. Uh, three forces ABC act on an object in equilibrium, so their resultant is going to be zero. Force A acts at an angle of 150 degrees to force B. They both have magnitude 20 newtons. Determine magnitude of C. Okay, so I'm going to just draw up my image. I've got an object. It's being acted on by two forces, A and B. Um, now, I don't know what direction A is going in. I don't know what direction B is in. So I'm just going to like put them on there. Um, so I'm going to say that A is going in this direction. That's just a personal choice. It could have been there, it could have been there, it could have been there, it doesn't matter. Um, now, what about vector B? Well, I know that acts at an angle of 150 degrees to force B. Now, does that mean 150 degrees this way or 150 degrees that way? It's unclear from the question, but it's actually not going to matter for the question. So I'm just going to work that way and say that 150 degrees here. Okay, that is 150 degrees. Okay, so then um, they both have magnitude 20 newtons. So I know the length of that is 20, and I know the length of that is 20. Now, if these things are equilibri in equilibrium, there must be some other third force acting on it, because otherwise it's just going to kind of drag in that direction. Um, and that third force must look like this-ish, something like that. I don't know exactly what, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, determine magnitude of C. So, how do I do it? I draw a triangle of forces. So, I say, right, it's in equilibrium, so therefore, um, vector A will, um, I can attach vector B to the tip of vector uh, A, like that, and then I get uh, another vector, so that's vector A, that's vector B, and now I have this new vector, vector C. Uh, I really wish I'd drawn that bigger. All right, there we have it, uh, A, B, and C, uh, all tip to tail, tip to tail. Now, 20 newtons, 20 newtons, I don't know, but that's what I'm trying to find out. Uh, I need to put in my angle somewhere. You need to be very, very careful. It's not 150, because I took B and I moved it from there to there. And so that angle is 150, but that angle is 30. Tip to tail, the angle is 30. Okay, from here, I should be able to use the uh, cosine rule to find the magnitude of... So that's the cosine rule. I'm just going to put in my values now. And I should just be able to type that into my calculator and get 10.35 newtons. Now, what does that mean for my little picture here? Well... This was 20 newtons, this is 20 newtons, so C is actually much smaller than what I've drawn. It's probably like that somewhere. That angle of 30 degrees, my triangle's not drawn very well, it needed to be 
tighter. That's more like 45, maybe even 50 degrees. Um, 10.35 newtons is the magnitude of C. Of course, we could ask one more question here. What angle does C make with B? Okay, uh, now look at our triangle for a minute. We're getting very lucky here because uh, this triangle is an isosceles triangle. So if that's 30 degrees, then uh, this angle here, be careful what that angle is. I'm just going to call that uh, angle theta for now. Um, now, that angle is going to be equal to the internal angles of a triangle, 180 minus uh, 30, and then those are going to be equal, so I can just divide by 2. And that's going to be 75 degrees. And you might be very tempted here to say, well, I'm finished. 75 degrees is the answer. But that is not the angle that C makes with B. Uh, because this is tip to tail, but when we talk about angles for vectors, we want to talk about the angle between, tail to tail. So I'm going to take vector C and I'm just going to redraw it over here. I'm going to take vector B and redraw it here. Now the angle we are talking about is that angle. But I don't want that angle. I want the angle between. I want this angle. Let's call it angle beta. Okay, and obviously angle beta is equal to, that's a straight line, 180 minus theta, which was 75. We get 105 degrees. That is the angle that C makes with B. Now, we're really lucky here because this was an isosceles triangle. If it wasn't an isosceles triangle, we'd probably have to use the sine rule to find that angle, but then that process of kind of moving vectors around and using the supplementary angle, same deal. All right, that is the triangle of forces.